So when you move your file server files into Microsoft 365, there are extensive proactive and reactive virus, malware, and ransomware protections that are built in. So let's start with the proactive protections inside of the Microsoft Defender Defense Suite, and specifically these three, Microsoft Defender Network Protection, Microsoft Defender Safe Attachments, and Microsoft Defender Safe documents. So with Microsoft Defender Network Protection, this is going to scan for and block URL connections that are made by the user inside any web browser, by the user clicking on a link in an email, and by any app or website on the computer secretly making a connection in the background without the user's knowledge. I get these block notifications several times throughout the week, and they're very reassuring. They just pop up on the bottom right of my computer. And it's probably one of the 20 or so web apps that I have open inside of my web browser. Who knows what connections are being made in the background, sending whatever information off to some marketing company somewhere or worse, potentially some other malicious website. So that is being blocked. And, and, and also it is being blocked no matter where that computer goes. It does not need to be on the local network behind a firewall. So you do not need to pay for a third party DNS filter like OpenDNS or pay for a content filtering license on your firewall. This is part of Microsoft Defender Network Protection and you get that in the versions we recommend of Microsoft 365. So business premium and up. Now, when users are actively uploading files, you have two levels of protection. You have the common virus detection engine in Microsoft 365. So that's going to scan all files for viruses being uploaded to SharePoint Online, Teams, and OneDrive. And that comes with all versions of Microsoft 365, even the cheapest version. Then you have Microsoft Defender Safe Attachments, and this is zero day threat protection. So this does a test detonation of files on upload. So files that pass the virus filter could be zero day threats. So Microsoft Defender Safe Attachments puts the file in a virtual container and replicates a user double clicking on the file to see if it does anything suspicious. And if it looks like something is going on that is suspicious with that file on that test detonation, it just blocks the upload. It also protects files coming through emails. Then you have safe documents in Microsoft 365 E5 security, and this would be an upgrade security. So office documents are scanned for malicious macros and code before being allowed to be opened. And it's not the same thing as an office document being opened up as read only or don't automatically execute. This protection scans for malware inside the office document that are code or macros. Now let's talk about the reactive protections. So the first one is if your files have been locked up, you have document versioning. Encrypted files can be rolled back to previous versions. Now the default in Microsoft 365 is that SharePoint behind the scenes will hold up to 500 versions of files automatically. And it just does that by default. And you also have recycle bins. So files that are deleted will be held for 93 days. They would first go into a first stage recycle bin. And if files are deleted from the first stage recycle bin, they're held in a second stage recycle bin, which only administrators have access to. And then if files are double deleted, they're out of the first stage and second stage recycle bin, you should configure a retention policy, and then that'll be put in a preservation whole library. So files that are double deleted will be retained for a specified retention period, regardless of the recycle bin status. So for example, at Zerillion, files are held for seven years, no matter what, no matter if they're double deleted or not. And then at the end of seven years, they're deleted from the system completely because they're just not used anymore. And files in HR and legal are held forever. But that's an example retention policy. But the point is, if you want to set it up so if files are double deleted from the system, but you want to hold on to them for a specified period of time, you can do that. And then you can also roll back your SharePoint Teams document folders. You can restore them to a previous point in time. You can roll back your OneDrive to a previous point in time. And then, of course, you should have a third party backup. So retention policies are very powerful inside of Microsoft 365. And you should absolutely configure them. They come with the system. They just need to be configured. But you want to have have a separate copy of your files outside of Microsoft 365 just in case. So you as the IT manager, you want to be able to tell whoever that cares, a board of directors, executive leadership, an insurance company, we have a separate copy of our files that are in the Microsoft Cloud. We have a separate copy of those in another place, another third party, 
just in case as a backup. We don't want to get carried away with a cost of implementation or the monthly cost to have that, but we want to have that little extra protection. And we also want to protect from malicious retention policy changes like 24 hours and delete. So imagine somebody that gets administrative access to your system. If they really wanted to mess with you and potentially create some real problems and damage, they could set a retention policy on your data to hold the data for 24 hours and then delete it completely. And if that happens, we have a real problem on our hands. So we want a way to be able to recover our files outside of the Microsoft Cloud. So these are powerful protections you get by moving your file server files into Microsoft 365. And if you'd like to learn more, click through to see our demo heavy long form YouTube videos on moving and securing your files into Microsoft 365.